favourite readers of SDM. Uh, last issue we looked at uh, targeting dewfish in shallow water. This issue we're going to look at hunting them in the deeper reefs and offshore uh, areas. And uh, we're heading offshore this morning on New South Wales north coast. Nice cool morning, winter's morning. And uh, hopefully we'll get out and find a dew. Hopefully we can show you this issue, uh, some of the, the tips and some of the tricks of, of targeting dewfish on the deeper reefs. Locating Mulloway in the offshore reefs is often more difficult than in the inshore headland areas. Right here we can see a school of blubber lips and a small Queensland groper. These are key species to look for when trying to target dewfish, as they like to hang around in similar areas. During this dive on a really fishy area, my focus immediately turns to dewfish after I spot a school of blubber lips sitting high in the water column as well as a small mangrove jack sitting here in the sawtails. And sure enough, a dewfish showed up. Unfortunately during this shot, the shooting line got tangled in the rubbers on the front of the gun. Consequently, the reel didn't unspool. It is strongly recommended that you use a belt reel whilst using a reel gun to help you get out of situations like this. After a brief fight, this 15 kilo specimen is pulled from the depths. Come down on the spot, real fishy show on the sounder. Thought they'd be true, so this one come in and gave it a bit of what for. On this particular dive, we can see Tim slowly making his way over to the school of blubber lips and slaty brim. Peering over the edge of the rock reveals a large school of our target species. Often Mulloway won't fight very hard off the bottom in deep water, but sometimes when you bring them to the surface, they go nuts. As previously mentioned in Mulloway Part 1, crawling along the bottom slowly and silently to a school of these fish will stack the odds greatly in your favour of bringing home Jewfish for dinner. Any time that you remove one of these fish from the school, the rest of the school isn't going to hang around for very long. You have about a minute to get down there and shoot another one. When a school of Mulloway have been located, it's very tempting just to shoot the first fish that you see. Not that there is anything wrong with that, but if you wish to find a trophy sized fish, it's best to hold off for a moment. Bryson is showing an insane amount of patience here as he watches this massive school of Big Chew pass him by in hopes of a trophy fish. When trying to discern the size of a fish in a school, one of the best indicators is a large arch on the back with big broad shoulders on the fish. Another large school of dew has been located. Josh is also showing a great deal of patience trying to find a larger fish. Unfortunately, the school of dew spooks and most of the larger fish have moved off. Part of the school returns, but only smaller fish, around the 10 kilo mark, and in typical Josh Ball fashion, he went for the smallest one. Slow, calm approach on this school of Mulloway makes it very easy to get close and a good shot. Once again, the bell reel just pays for itself right here. It 
is not frequent that you see a single mulloway by itself. Although this can happen, most of the time there's always going to be a few fish hanging around. Once again, here Bryson waits for the larger fish at the back of the school to come closer to him. At times you may find yourself in a situation where you can only approach these fish from straight above. A silent duck dive combined with a slow and stealthy approach will often get you in range of the school in Mulloway. As mentioned, the rest of the fish aren't going to hang around very long after you shoot one. When approaching a school of dew from above, there is very rarely any cover available. If you happen to stumble across two eagle rays, they seem to work as cover. Just watch out for the barbs. This 20 kilogram fish had a hook stuck in its mouth. It was long and skinny for its size. It should have been closer to 25 kilos, but the hook was obviously hindering its ability to feed. Aggressively swimming at the Jew will ensure that you don't have any good photos for Facebook later on. What occurred in the previous scene isn't quite accurate. Josh and I dove on the same spot looking for Jew, but we landed on opposite sides of the rock. Here I can see the tail of a Jew sitting in the distance, but there is also another fish swimming at me head on here. Much like a flock of birds, a school of Jew will have a warning fish. These will alert the other fish in the area of danger, and this was the reason why the school of Jew spooked when Josh dived on them. When a mulloway is brought up from the depths, its swim bladder will expand and be forced out of its mouth. One reason why these fish are not good for catch and release line fishing. Sometimes the water that you're going to be diving for chasing mulloway isn't the most clear you've ever seen in your life. Many large mulloway get captured in dirty water like this, and they can be somewhat easier to approach than out in the open in crystal clean water. Mulloway aren't always going to be hanging on the bottom. Be sure to check above your eye line as they'll sometimes come in from here. In green dirty water and with lots of bait around, it's very easy to overlook a school of mulloway. Here you can see them sitting right under the bait. Easily overlooked, here another Jew of 19 kilos resting under the bait. Wow. 
Waiting for a Mulloway to turn and then shoot it greatly reduces your chances of bending your spear. On this particular occasion, Timothy graciously leaves the school of Jew for them to swim oh, straight up what, to me. What crap? Give me that stupid thing. Let me tell it how I see it, Dan. Right in the middle of the school, there was a big fish, I reckon pretty close to the 30 kilo mark. And I couldn't get close to it. The other fish were in the road and then they spooked a little. I followed and still couldn't get close. So thought I'd leave that school till the next dive. I look to my left and who do I see? Daniel Mann poaching the smallest fish in the school. On the long ascent to the surface, I was thinking of many things I wanted to say to Dan and when I actually reached the surface, I thought better of all of them and figured I'd just say nothing. Uh, he came to the surface looking at me with a very, very guilty conscience. His reply was just simply to my silence, 